Islam Makachev striking is probably not the sexiest thing I could make a video about. We could talk about his beautiful smash passing, his takedowns, this incredibly slick grip break to free Kajan Johnson's arm for a perfectly controlled and safe armbar submission. But he was already a shit-hot grappler when he arrived in the UFC. Back then his striking though was still pretty sloppy. Over the last seven years, Makachev has sharpened his few basic tools and improved his comfort under fire. Sitting behind his left straight and left round kick, Makachev has become a very difficult man to lay a glove on. In fact, under 100 significant strikes have been landed on Makachev by all 11 of his UFC opponents combined. The threat of his wrestling can't be separated from his striking. It makes opponents less inclined to throw strikes after all, but his footwork and distancing have certainly come on in leaps and bounds. The southpaw left straight has become Makachev's main weapon on the feet, but he recognised the use of the overhand left even earlier. Here we get to tie it back to Fedor and the casting punch, an idea everyone was mad about in 2004. The gist is that by you swinging wide, your opponent will probably get inside position, blocking the blow and achieving an underhook as you move to the clinch. But if you are confident enough throwing or tripping an opponent without underhooks, you have still achieved your clinch. In grappling of all types, an underhook is a powerful thing. It gives you the connection needed to lift someone, or at least prevent them from dropping on your hips. But an underhook can also very quickly be turned into an overhook by the other man. And then the fight is your underhook attacks against their overhook attacks. The overhook and over the back grips are closely linked to the belt grips that are popular in judo and sambo. So Makachev swings wide to occupy his opponent's hands, and knows that they have been training to get the underhooks at all cost when he clinches. So he's just happy to get some form of control and start throwing or tripping. Overhook attacks are now even more important along the fence. Before, everyone stood wide to prevent the opponent scooping up a double leg. So Habib and the AKA boys started getting underhooks, stepping a knee inside, and throwing off the fence. Now you have shit-hot sambists and judoka, like Islam and Shavkat Rachmanov, standing upright along the fence, holding the overhook, and focusing on keeping the opponent's knee from getting inside. Then when they see the opening, they step through and hit a wizard kick, Haragoshi, Uchimata, or cool Russian named throw. The southpaw overhand can also be turned into a collar tie, which is linked closely to the overhook. Catching the collar tie with the rear hand and throwing uppercuts with the lead hand is a sneaky technique which allows a fighter to get his driving leg underneath his uppercut and put surprising stank on the blow. Matt Linland was great at using this while pursuing clinches and Sandy Sadler used it ruthlessly in boxing. Successful overhook and collar tie work in turn make underhooks easier to get. If the opponent retreats from an overhook or grip over the back, he gives up the collar tie as seen in Daniel Cormier's repeated clinch entries against Stipe Miocic in their first fight. If a fighter retreats from a collar tie, he can give up the underhook.
It is a little unfair that everything Islam Makachev does is immediately compared to his great teammate and friend, Habib Nurmagomedov. As Kirill Sidelnikov will attest, being Fedor's sparring partner don't make you Fedor. But Makachev has proven to be something special in his own right, and he attempts to complete his march to a shot at the UFC lightweight title this weekend. I make these videos for fun and they aren't monetized, but I host the Jack Slack podcast twice a week and write articles at fightprimer.com. Cheers.